Hi all. So in this video we are going to see about the non-respiratory functions of lung. So what are the different functions of the lung other than respiration? So this question can be asked as a short essay for our university. So you should know what are the different points that you can write when such a question is asked. So these are the main six points that you have to include in your answer. We will see each one by one. So the first point is olfaction. So we know that olfaction means it is a sense of smell. So in order to smell something, we should first breathe in the air, right? So you have to breathe in there only then it can reach the olfactory receptors that are present on the upper part of the roof of your nasal cavity. So ventilation is essential for the delivery of odorants to the olfactory epithelium. So that is the first function that is olfaction. So the next point is processing of the inhaled air. So what are the different changes that occur to our inhaled air? See so first of all our nasal cavity will help in warming up the inhaled air and it also moisturizes it. It will add the water component to our inhaled air which will thereby prevent alveolar from being desiccated. And not only that it has got a very important function of filtering out these particulate matter or large particles. So see each part of our respiratory tract is designed in such a way that it will block the maximum amount of germs that can enter or any particles that can enter. So we will see this uh, in more detail. So if the particle size is greater than 15 micrometer, it will be filtered by our nasal hair, right? And if it is, uh, if it is larger than 10, it will impact our embed themses in the mucus that coats the nasal mucosa. And if it is between 2 to 10, it will sediment from slowly moving air in smaller airways and become embedded in the mucus. If it is below 0.5 micrometer, it reaches the alveoli suspended in the air as aerosols. So what did we say just now? See, suppose the particle is bigger than say um, 15. Okay, if it is more than 15, it will not enter our nasal tract because it will be big enough. So our nasal hairs will not allow them to enter the nose. Okay. Now if it is between 15 and 10, what will happen? It may embed itself in the mucosa of the nasal cavity. Okay, so it can it can it will be present here in the nasal cavity. It will embed itself in the mucosa of the nasal cavity. Now, if it is smaller than that, what will happen? It can move down, right? It can move down into the smaller airways and it can become embedded in the smaller uh, you know branches of the or the bronchi and the bronchioles. And if it is even smaller than that, what will happen? It, it will reach the alveoli and where it will remain as aerosols. Okay, it will remain suspended in the air as aerosols. So remember, this is how, uh, so only very small diameter particles can enter our lungs. Okay, so that is how we filter out large particles. So now we have filtered the particles. Our next job is to remove these particles. How does our lung remove these filtered particles? So for that first of all we have got reflexes in our airways such as cough and sneeze reflex. So in case a part particulate matter gets inside nasal cavity or a pharynx we cough or sneeze so that it goes out of our body. Now next important mechanism by which the dust particles are moved out is mucociliary escalator and mucokinesis. What is meant by these terms? See, we know that we've got tracheobronchial secretions, right? Now, these tracheobronchial secretions is mainly mucus and it's got two layers, a gel layer and sole layer, okay? And here, these cells are ciliated, okay? So, the cilia itself will move in such a fashion that the dust particles are pushed outside the body. That is called mucociliary escalator function, okay? Mucociliary escalator because it helps the dust particles to move out into the body or move up the respiratory tract to later uh, give out through the uh, upper respiratory tract. Not only that, the mucus layer, it's got two layers, which is the gel layer and the sole layer. So the mucus layers itself will move. Okay. So that is called mucokinesis. It is called mucokinesis. So two terms to remember in removal of filtered particles, mucociliary escalator and mucokinesis. These are two mechanisms by which the dust particles are removed. Now in case instead of dust particles, there are, in, in case there are some bacteria that is inhaled, how does the lung 
defend the body against these inhaled bacteria or other pathogens. So that is our next point, lung defense mechanisms. So one of the important lung defense mechanisms is pulmonary alveolar macrophages. So we know that macrophages in general are phagocytic particles, right? Phagocytic cells. They phagocytose different pathogens that uh, affect the or enter the body. So here also pulmonary alveolar macrophages actively phag are they are actively phagocytic and ingest the inhaled bacteria and small particles. Not only that, they process the inhaled antigens for immunological attack. Okay, and uh, you processing after the processing the inhaled antigens, they also secrete substances that attract the granulocytes to the lungs, as well as substances that stimulate. granulocyte monocyte formation in the bone marrow so they not they not only attract the granulocytes that are present but also stimulate their formation in the bone marrow so these are the three methods by which pulmonary alveolar macrophages help in lung defense they act they are actively phagocytic and ingest the inhaled bacteria inhaled bacteria or other pathogens after inhaling they process them for immunological attack they attract the granulocytes and stimulate production of granulocyte monocyte in the bone marrow so that was about pulmonary alveolar macrophages the next lung defense mechanism is the bronchial secretions our bronchial secretions contain many substances especially immunoglobulin a which is an antibody it con contains collectins including surfactant protein a and d defensins and other peptides and proteases reactive reactive oxygen species and reactive nitrogen species so there are a lot of things in the bronchial secretions which itself will defend our body against inhaled pathogens of which the most important one is immunoglobulin a okay and finally a paranasal sinuses also produce nitric oxide which is bacteriostatic so this will help Uh, the body to prevent any sort of colonization or bacterial growth inside a paranasal sinuses okay so this is how the lung defends the body from inhaled pathogens we've, we've seen three of them pulmonary alveolar macrophages bronchial secretions and nitric oxide present in the epithelium of paranasal sinuses okay so that will complete of what happens to the air once it is inhaled and how the body protects the protects from inhaled pathogens Now next uh, function is that of a circulatory one. So we'll see what it is. Left ventricular reservoir function. What does that mean? See our pulmonary vessels are highly compliant. So the pulmonary vessels itself can contain approximately 440 ml of blood. Now this is an important buffer for filling of left ventricle. So basically, if got a reservoir there, the the blood can be stored in the pulmonary vessels because they are highly compliant so it acts as a reservoir for left ventricle so that the cardiac output is always maintained in all conditions right the next function was, is also a function of the circulatory system we'll see so the pulmonary circulation the pulmonary vasculature helps in filtering small emboli from the blood how see the pulmonary vasculature it's like a filter okay so it can capture microscopic emboli and this is very useful because it will prevent the escape of these emboli into the systemic circulation so that it will not lodge into any other arteries and cause an ischemia to that organ so the pulmonary vasculature will act like a filter and it will filter out small emboli from the blood so these are the two important functions based on the pulmonary circulation part one is that it is a good reservoir and second is that it will filter small emboli and finally we've got some metabolic functions okay so we'll see what the metabolic functions are there are substances that are produced by the lung there are substances that are removed by the lung okay so we'll see what they are so synthesized and used in the lungs is surfactant so surfactant is a product which is synthesized in the lung and is used inside the lung okay now there are other substances that are synthesized by the lung but is released into the blood so we'll see what they are so synthesized is stored and released into the blood they are prostaglandins histamine and calicrin prostaglandin histamine and calicrin okay now there are some substances that are removed from the blood by the lung we'll see what they are so partially removed from the blood are substances like bradykinin adenine nucleotides 
serotonin, norepinephrine and acetylcholine. See all the serotonin, norepinephrine, all the excess neurotransmitters are removed by the lungs and also bradykinin and adenine nucleotides. And there are some substances that are activated inside the lungs. What are they? Angiotensin converting enzyme. You know angiotensin converting enzyme helps in uh, conversion of angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. So that concludes our important non-respiratory functions of the lung. Now we have to finish our answer with an applied aspect. So as an applied aspect you can, you can write about the Cartagner syndrome. What is Cartagner syndrome? Basically it is a defective motility of cilia. So that a ciliary escalator action, mucociliary escalator action will not take place. Why is it so? Because the axonemal dynein is affected. So Cartagena syndrome is a genetic defect in which the axonemal dynein is affected. So there is defective ciliary motility. So these uh, patients with this syndrome will have recurrent lung infections. So to summarize, we have seen about olfaction, processing of inspired air, lung defense mechanism, ventricular reservoir, filtering a small emboli from the blood and metabolic functions. So these are the important points you have to write when such a question is asked. Now this segment is especially for those students who are trying to appear for NEET PG. Some important MCQ questions, they are basically sentences or important sentences from different standard textbooks. So the first one is what is the rate at which the cilia beat inside the respiratory system, the, muc the rate of ciliary muc uh, mucociliary escalator action. So that is around 10 to 15 hertz. The frequency is around 10 to 15 hertz. Now what is the speed at which this mucociliary mechanism can shift the particles or move the particles? So it can shift the particles at a rate of 16 millimeters per minute. 16 millimeters per minute. Now another important point regarding the lung defense is that the pulmonary epithelium contains a group of protease activated receptors which are called PAR and it is this PAR which when activated trigger release of prostaglandins okay, and which in turn protects the epithelial cells. So the protease activated receptors present in the pulmonary epithelium is PAR2 it is also present in other, for other parts of the body like gastrointestinal system but in the lungs it is PAR2. Now that is also a potential MCQ question that can be asked for NEED PG. Right? So I hope this concept is clear. In the first year MBBS level, you just have to know about the non-respiratory functions, the six points that I've mentioned. And those interested in NEED PG can have a look at this MCQ also. So that's all. I hope the concept is clear. Thank you.